Recently, the World Health Organization released a report that 25% of people around the world are experiencing depression through this COVID-19 pandemic. That's a lot of people. Let me put that in better perspective for you. The Journal of the American Medical Association published a study that found that prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, in the United States, about 8.5% of people were diagnosed with depression. During the pandemic, that figure rose to 27.8%. That's a huge increase. Today, I want to talk about depression, and I want to talk about how spirituality can really help resolve depression or be a good ancillary support, because whether we're talking about the pandemic or not, many people live with depression. So now's a great time to subscribe to this channel as well as click the bell so you're notified of future videos. People don't understand depression. They think that people who are depressed are sad or that they're feeling blue. They think that, well, you know, they're just lazy. They're looking for an excuse. People don't realize that depression is an illness. And because of the misconceptions that are commonly held about depression, people who experience depression also experience a great deal of alienation and isolation. There's sort of a, a kind of prejudice that goes with depression. What causes depression? Now that's a hard question to answer because there's no one thing that causes depression. You know, some people have a genetic predisposition. Some people, many people, experience different life events. And these life events lead to a spiral of depression. And those can be a number of things. They can be a serious diagnosis with something like cancer or the death of a loved one or a loss of a job or the loss of a home, financial hardship. Many difficult things in life can lead to a depression spiral. But so can some very positive things, or things we associate with being positive, like the birth of a child. Many women experience depression after childbirth. All of these changes can predispose us to depression. Now, what happens with a predisposition is that sometimes you go through whatever's happening and you're just fine. You work through it. But other times you get stuck. That's sort of what's happening with depression. It's, it's you're not able to work through the stress that's associated with the change. And when that happens, the neurochemicals in your brain start to function differently. They're not producing the appropriate levels. It's not really the cause of depression, but that's what happens with depression. So I want to talk about those neurochemicals and how spiritual practice can help to regulate them. And as I talk about them, I want to be very, very clear that the most important thing you can do when you're experiencing depression is to see a mental health provider and work with the mental health provider to get the appropriate medication you need, as well as to engage in cognitive-based therapy that will really help your thinking patterns to look at life differently. Research studies for the last 30 years, maybe 40 years, have shown that the best strategy for resolving depression is the combination of medication and cognitive-based therapy. We know that that works. And as an ancillary support, spiritual practice, particularly meditation, can be a great help. So one of the things that happens in our brains when we're experiencing depression is the level of serotonin diminishes. Now, serotonin is what we, what some people call the happy chemical. It's what helps us to feel happiness and pleasure in life. And when we're depressed, when someone is depressed, that serotonin level decreases. However, with the practice of meditation, the level of serotonin in our brain increases. You know, many people talk about just commonly that when they're practicing meditation, especially once they develop a practice, they're happier in life. 
That's because there's more serotonin floating around in their brain. It helps to make them happier. And that's an important thing when you're depressed. Another neurochemical that's really important is cortisol. Cortisol is the stress neurochemical. When we're stressed, the level of cortisol increases. And that's significant for us. When we practice meditation, meditation helps the level of cortisol decrease. In depression, cortisol is increasing, but meditation helps to bring it down. So meditation can be very important for reducing that cortisol level. One of the things that happens for many people with depression is they have sleep disturbance. They either have difficulty falling asleep or they'll sleep for a few hours and wake back up and can't get back to sleep. One of the neurochemicals that has to do with sleep is melatonin. In meditation, the level of melatonin increases in our brain and that helps us to sleep better. And yes, indeed, people commonly report that when they're doing meditation, they experience better sleep. They're, more, they're able to rest more. They're more at peace. So meditation in and of itself can be a very helpful aid when you're experiencing depression. Again, seek proper treatment. That's really important. But one of the ways you can take care of yourself is developing a practice of meditation. Now, here's the other thing. If you've listened to other videos on this channel, then you know that I understand spirituality as that part of us that helps us to create, discover, and encounter things in our life that are meaningful, that are purposeful, that we give value to. When you're depressed, you don't have a sense of meaning. There seems like there's no purpose in life. You don't want to do anything because what does it matter? Who cares? Nurturing that spiritual dimension of meaning, purpose, and value can help turn around depression. And it can be very simple things. It could be caring for a pet or a plant or your family, or if you're alone, caring for yourself and seeing a purpose in that, learning to see yourself as a person of value. And that can be very challenging when you're experiencing depression, seeing yourself as valuable. But as you're able to do that and nurture yourself and take care of yourself, then you're also helping the depression resolve. It's important to take things in little steps because maybe that's the best you can do when you're experiencing depression but one foot in front of the other, and you're able to start helping depression resolve. Maybe you have long-term endemic depression. All of the things I'm talking about can help take the edge off, even if things can't be fully resolved. Indeed, meditation is very helpful because of the way it impacts our brain chemistry. So I hope this has been helpful for you and put some pieces together for you as a way to build strategies to live with depression. Please ask some questions in the comments, make some comments of your own, subscribe to this channel, share this video because, hey, a lot of people are experiencing depression right now. And know that I really appreciate the time you spend watching videos here on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a good day. Thank you.